I'm Lloyd Macedo, speaking to you from LloydMacedo.com. I know it's Lloyd Macedo. Today, the date is uh, 15th April 2015. Uh, the time right now is 2 a.m. That's 2 in the morning now. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to believe this if I tell you. All right. A few days ago, um, a woman came. A woman said she wanted to meet up with me and get her resume done because she apparently didn't have a job for... A uh, couple of months, the only job that she had was a temporary one. So I said, okay, fine, all right. Um, I told my charges, my charges would be 500 US dollars in order to make her resume, rebrand it, because I had to look at it. There were a lot of mistakes and errors. Um, she asked me for a discount. I said no. And uh, eventually, I guess she uh, did a background check and found out that, yes, maybe I could add value to her. Finally, she came down. When she came down here, the thing that I noticed about her is she had a torn and tattered bag, handbag. She was wearing really dilapidated clothes. Uh, she was really thin. I mean, it looked like she didn't have food for months. And uh, uh, she didn't look like the type of a client who had money. So, uh, but I didn't judge her. I, I, I made it uh, business as usual. And the first question that I normally ask anybody who comes and meets me is, uh, my charge is 500 US dollars. Can I have the money first? No sooner did I ask her the money, so she started to say, can you give me a discount? I said, no. Once I made it very clear. Then she bought about the option of installments, which I again said no. And uh, finally I told her, say, listen, if you don't have the money, I can't, I can't do it um, because that's how my business works. And... Um, um, I told her you need to have the money to invest in yourself. I, I just kept talking naturally and then I, I turned around and saw that she started to cry. Now the type of tears that she had was, uh, you know, the type of tears that you have when you're really frustrated, when you're suffocating, when you just cannot breathe. It's not like those uh, have pity on me tears. It's, it's those uh, tears of frustration, of raw pain. So she really started to cry and uh, she couldn't breathe. So I, I let her relax and I told her, fine, so take it easy. Uh, I bought a, a, a glass of water and uh, I just said, relax, give her a tissue and she said, tell me what's going on. So eventually she gave me the history that uh, she's looking after her family, her husband is without a job, she's looking after her children, she's looking after her mother and father and she's looking after her husband's mother and father. So she's looking after seven people at the same time uh, just earning a broken down income of around roughly, let's say, a thousand five hundred US dollars, close to two thousand, which is not at all enough in an expensive city. So, I I I realized she was pretty sincere, and so then what I decided is fine. I told her, listen, let's do it. Let's make it this way. You don't pay me, and. Uh, what I'll do is I'll help you sort yourself out. And since you're an expert on websites, you give me your advice on how I can make my website even better. We'll kind of consider it a fair exchange. She wanted to still pay me, which I respected, uh, but I said no. So I made her resume. We started working on it and I offered to make her husband's resume. I offered to train her and her husband. I offered to help them get a job. And I immediately started calling all my contacts Whoever, they are decision makers, they are people from big positions. So I started calling everyone. And um, I told her that we'd get you sorted out as quickly as possible. So for the next two days, I was busy making phone calls, calling up people, arranging interviews for her. I think I lined up around seven interviews. I had uh, at least three jobs, which I kind of confirmed in terms of for her employment. And uh, even for her husband, I, I kind of looked at different options. I even had a business a partner ready to invest in her if she wanted to be a business partner so he could offer a visa for the entire family all this in two days and I tried calling her up but she didn't pick up on day one so I thought she was busy I tried calling her up on day two she didn't pick up eventually um, I, I kind of felt something funny because two days you're trying to call someone they don't call you back so then I tried from a different phone and a number and when I called her from that number she picked up and the first question I asked her is uh, I've been trying to call you from two days. Why is it that you didn't pick up the phone? Why are you avoiding me? So at first she said, no, I was busy. But then she said, I want to tell you the truth. I said, yeah, please go ahead. She said, you have insulted me and you have uh, uh, spoiled my name. So I was like, 
how in the world did I insult you and how in the world did I spoil your name? Apparently, because I put up a Facebook a social media request asking people uh, to help out, give her a job without stating her name, identity, nothing. I never stated her name, never stated her identity. Nobody knows who she is. Uh, by doing that, apparently I have insulted her and spoiled her name. And um, because I put a blog, I have my daily blog where I put these incidents and uh, events and happenings. And she said, uh, uh, anybody who knows me who would read that, would uh, know it's me and that would spoil my name and that would spoil my family's name or whatever. I, I told her nobody knows it's you because I haven't put your name anywhere. I have not mentioned it's you and it's on my private blog. It's, it's, it's on my website. She's saying, yeah, my family also, I've told my family about you. So they'll also check your website. They'll check this incident and they'll know it's me. Now, just imagine this, a person who doesn't have money, who doesn't have money um, to make ends meet, who doesn't have money to pay for services, who wants a job, who doesn't have a life, who is worried about her husband not having a job. Uh, I'm trying to help her get a job, I'm trying to help her husband get a job, trying to train them, trying to offer my services for free, calling on my contacts, convincing them that they should employ this pe uh, these people and putting my reputation on the line. And all that, is it doesn't matter all that doesn't matter all she could identify is me spoiling her name i i i really lost it i have never lost my cool so easily but at this one i really lost it. and i let her have it left right and center i even told her that i was i would make it a police case if required with my connections it was it was outrageous it was, it was stupid I mean, I, I, I couldn't believe, I couldn't believe that, you know, you genuinely help someone. You genuinely, from your heart of hearts, want to help someone, want to do something worthwhile. And they cherry pick one episode, which is not at all related to them. And they blow it out of proportions and they brand you as a bad guy. She had the audacity to even ignore my calls, to be ungrateful and to, you know, um, to slam up a accusation that I was spoiling her name. What, what fucking name do you have if, if you don't have food to eat? You're worried about what the world thinks about you. You're worried about what society thinks about you. When you don't have food to eat money, when you don't have food, when you don't have money to provide for your children, when you don't have money to look after your family, and you're worried what the world thinks about you. And the best part of the whole thing is, I never even revealed her name. I never revealed her identity or nationality. Nothing about her. Nobody knows who she is. I was absolutely stunned. In fact, all my contacts, when I spoke to them and told them about this incident, they said the reason why she is having a pathetic life, the reason why she's having all these problems is because of this mentality, is because of this attitude of hers, is because of this stupidity. That is why People like her will never succeed, will never, never, never succeed. And I can assure you this much. I mean, I'm going out of the way calling up directors of companies, calling up vice presidents, calling up owners of companies and telling them, uh, this is a poor lady, please help her, you know, uh, as a favor for me, just give her a job, try her up. And uh, people, I convince them to say yes. And all she can do is, identify, cherry pick one incident um, of me writing a blog, writing an article where I have asked people to help her and she considers this as spoiling her name. So I, I end result, I, I give out to her. I told her she must pay, although I didn't charge her the full amount, just charged her a small nominal amount. And I told her, finish, that's it, go at peace. Don't ever call me again. Don't ever get in touch with me, nothing. She offered to help and she wanted to explain herself. I'm not interested, I'm really not interested. So this is the reason, this is the reason I hate helping the poor. I hate helping such people. I hate offering my services for free. Charity is bullshit and that is why I don't wanna help people because there are these ungrateful, uh, you know, pathetic minded people and that is why they are suffering. That is why they are like this and that is why they don't deserve to be helped and I, I don't wanna help such people. I don't want to help and they're pathetic, absolutely pathetic. And it's a shame. It's a shame 
that people are like this. It's a shame that her, her family has to suffer like this because of her ignorance. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 I'm just so disgusted. Honestly, I wanted to help. I really wanted to, I really felt bad. But even after the incident happened, I, I still thought maybe I should help. But the fact of the matter is, um, it's, it's like, it's like, you know, trying to put your hand into sewage. If you put your hand, you're going to smell of shit anyway. So why put your hand in the first place? I, I decided no more. I, I, I didn't want to deal with this person anymore. And that is the reason. That is, this is exactly the reason why I don't like helping people for free. I don't want to help anybody for free. And that is why I don't believe in helping the poor. This, this is not the first time it has happened. It has always happened. They always turn around and stab you at the back and uh, they talk shit. And that is why it's better. It's absolutely better when you bring money in the equation and you provide for a service. There are no favors, nothing. You give me the money. I've done the job. That's it. Goodbye. I don't want to know you anymore. So Lloyd from LloydMasita.com and who's LloydMasita.com telling you this shocking incident uh, that really has justified why I did not help the poor. I really, really find it pathetic. And I cannot believe that I had to meet a person like this. I, I wish her all the best. I, I really hope you succeed. You find somebody who helps you. Uh, but I don't want to know people like this. I really don't want to know people like this. In fact, nobody knows who I'm talking about. And she still makes a big deal about it. Um, now, when you don't have money, when you don't have a job, when you don't have any, uh, um, any means to survive, let's see uh, how much people care about your name, your reputation, and all the bullshit from anonymous articles, which nobody knows have written about you. You can keep your ego and shove it up your ass. That's what. Live from LoyMasita.com, news You know, sharing with you this absolutely disgusting and disturbing incident of people who don't deserve to be helped. Let me know what you think. Live from LoyMasita.com, news Signing off for now. Goodbye.